All right, ladies and gents, welcome to a 1v1 game. That's right, 1v1 game, surprising on this channel. A 1v1 game on Arabia, and it is around the 1600 level. Now, forgive me if I've got the ELO wrong, but around 1600, which puts you in the top 1000, top 1500. Still, you're up there, though you are also quite far away from like the tippity top, right? Um, so we have Indians versus Chinese, but in the yellow, we have Tokaraka. And then in the blue, we've got, we've got Quan. Um, I don't know too much about these players. Tokaraka has actually been around the community for many years. He started off in the community when he was like 13 or 14. And he actually used to be super annoying. That's right, Tokaraka. <laughs> I banned him on Voobly once, like three years ago. And then he came out like years later. He's like, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Seems to have chilled out a little bit. Uh, I think he was spamming me with friend requests or something. But anyways, he's here. He's playing in the yellow. We've got Indians versus Chinese. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, massive freaking hill right in the front. What on earth is this? And then if you look over at Blue's base, just openness as far as the eye can see. Like This is a really crazy Arabia generation. And this was the last patch. So this was when Arabia was very uh, wonky in many ways. And I'm not necessarily saying that, uh, you know, the openness aspect isn't good. Like, that's what Arabia is all about. But uh, still, I'm like looking at this like, what on earth is that hill, man? Yeah, we have Chinese versus Indians. Uh, I, I approach every game a little bit differently. And I didn't really prep on how I'm going to approach this game with you all. Um, but I am going to, I guess, dive into just talking about how the Civ matchups work. The thing about Indians is... They are a civilization that is about matchups. So, and this is the case with a lot of civs in many ways, but but Indians have very good camels and very good eco. So if they're up against a civilization that typically goes for knights, for example, then yeah, Indians are going to be strong. But if Indians are up against, let's say, a civilization that has super strong infantry or monks and eagles, let's say Mayans, Aztecs, or Incas, those civs tend to give Indians big problems. So when you pick Indians or when you get Indians with random Civ, you really, you know, you have your fingers crossed that the matchup's going to be nice. And across the way, we have Chinese. And Chinese are known for being able to do pretty much everything very, very well. Uh, they start with six villagers, so that's that makes them unique. Their technologies are cheaper throughout the game. Their farms have a bit more food on them. Unless they... Did they remove that bonus at some point, chat? Sorry, I'm, I assume they still have that bonus. And they could their tech tree is just as diverse as it gets. Knights, their own camels, halberdiers, champions, archers, chukunus, siege ram, and heavy scorpion. The list goes on with the Chinese. Um, and so then you've got to, like I mentioned the chukunu, then you've got to think about the unique unit. And the chukunu is even seen a lot more frequently than the elephant archer. Uh, and, and I think there's been examples recently where maybe that could change, but everyone still kind of feels like the elephant archer is is kind of a meme. It's expensive. It's it's chonky, but uh, maybe not worth it. So we'll see how it plays out. Um, in Age of Empires 2, you, you tend to have, on Arabia anyways, you tend to have pretty aggressive openings. I noticed there was four on wood for both players. So we could see some type of man-at-arm play or archer play. And blue over here. If he's on POZ, I recall POZ as being a very classic clan. Like, I remember uh, Eddie, who's a French player who used to play Arena. He's a legend of the game. Eddie uh, used to be on POZ. And I don't know much about the clan. Maybe someone in chat here will know. Yeah, a little greedy here from Blue, to be honest. Like, he has not really scouted all that much. And he's still pushing deer. But with Chinese, you want to be greedy sometimes. Get as much food as possible. Oh, you guys are talking about the farms. They nerfed it to 10%. Okay, so you still get extra food on the Chinese farms? Okay, cool. But they did make a change. Good to know. Yeah, I, I, I'm always, like, caught up between things I discuss in the balance group and things that actually happen. <laughs> Here's Tokaraki. He spotted the barracks. That might actually make him a little confused. And I think for a time that maybe uh, Blue was, was considering using that. But decided against it. <clears throat> And Tokaraka could actually get a scout trapped in. If this was me, oh my god. That should be a trapped scout. Come on, 1600s. <laughs> no! One house and Tokaraka's scout would have been trapped. What was he thinking? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, 1600s are really good, but like... 
if that was against a 2k plus player that would be completely punished and it would look very silly oh i'm so disappointed in you blue man like i said greed galore over here for blue blue has not scouted the enemy yet and what the enemy is doing is going to be men at arm opening i like this from tokaraka if you expect man at arms from the opposition which i think he was expecting because he saw the barracks he's going to confirm that here in a second walling up your resources is important if he can do that as well on the wood lines i'm, I'm really curious to see what a player at this level is going to be able to accomplish with this because it's really annoying it looks like the walls are going down. Also, the scout for Tokaraka going down. But Blue didn't do the best of job of tracking this. He, he's sending a scout back because he knows this scout is weak. But I don't think he's sending it back because he knew these militia were coming. And it's four militia and four full HP militia. And wow, I like this. You're getting some hits here on the militia with the scout, trying to bait it back. And we have an immediate archer range from Blue. Who, who really has been punished due to the lack of scouting? Like this here, you should have never been surprised by this. And oh, geez. Oh, 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 bad fights. All right, so now I'm curious, what's Tokaraka going to do as a follow-up? I don't think attacking the archer range is the right play. But you tend to see at higher elo, as this is super aggressive, okay. What you tend to see at higher elo is you'll, you'll wait for that archer follow-up. Good job there from Blue. He's going to go in there and try and get the scout. He actually misses it. Back behind this, we've got an archer range and a blacksmith. It Tokaraka has played this really well so far. But what you want to do with these men-at-arms is you want to force... You want to apply pressure elsewhere and force some mistakes. So, loses the scout. And we're going to see these men-at-arms pretty much have no counter until any archers come out here from blue. Blue's got one. And blue will be working up towards the second one. Now... Tokaraka didn't scout where the gold was. He didn't scout there's another wood line. He also didn't scout there's berries. So even if the opponents have really good quick walls, what you should probably try to do is just head to an area and force them to quick wall. Like, let me put it to you this way, because I know a lot of people watching this probably are just like, quick wall? Oh, that sucks. If you know how difficult something is, make the opponent have to do it, <laughs> right? It's, it's extremely awkward, but great job from Blue here. And the archers, unfortunately, uh, he's actually going skirms and archer. Interesting. Uh, they're, they're a little ways behind here. And I guess the skirm thought is that the enemy's going to have archers. We'll see how that plays out. Blue here, trying to little quick walls here. All right, not bad. And overall, you know, for this level, this has been really good. It's, it's, it's some messiness to it. But not too bad right now. The Chinese player, as we all know, is very, very capable with archers, this civilization is going archers and to be honest if you if you think about the situation right now tokaraka has got man at arms he also has fletching already where the enemy does not have fletching games are won with less there's so much pressure here and blue is like oh no i need the upgrades i need the upgrades but he doesn't have the upgrades he's going to drop a tower high pressure stuff perfect execution from the yellow player so far and, and that wasn't even walled the villager over chopped it Messy, messy, stressful times. Villagers getting pulled back. This villager's getting pulled back as well. And in the end, I guess the tower is going to be what ends up saving blue here. Like, look at this. Tokaraka does kill a villager, but that's only one villager killed. Granted, a few a few military units were killed as well. 11 to 3 KD. In the end, only one villager down when your Chinese is not the end of the world. But, woof! Just, just much better execution from the yellow player. In early feudal, but now he's probably macroing at home or something. Yeah, look, adding farms, units going into the TC. <laughs> I've grown accustomed to that when watching uh, the mid elo players, especially because multitasking is really tricky in this game. And so normally you're doing something at home, you're going to make mis some mistakes on the front. All right, so things are fairly open, but this is the time where you settle down a little bit, take some deep breaths. So we're going to see, we're going to see some walling up here, which I like. Just now realized that neither player had eco upgrades this entire time. But you do have the wood upgrade on the way right now for yellow. Yellow's in a rough spot because... Or, or, sorry, blue's in a rough spot because the enemy has a lot of skirms out there. So what I'd suggest if you already have two ranges... Is I would probably just, just start to, to make your own skirms and fight that. The other thing 
is that this tower pretty much protects this entire area. I mean, technically, they can hit the wood line. But if you tower, one of the best and sneakiest things you can do is actually go out for a counterattack of some kind before the enemy walls up. That Tokaraka is really content, or not content, but intent. What is that gate? Hello? Hello? <laughs> what? I don't understand. That must be a mistake of some kind. I do not understand that gate. But anyways, he seems really intent on walling up right now. He's got a lot of villagers walling. Like, way too many villagers. Got villagers walling over here as well. Okay. And now we've got the fight. I still don't understand that gate, but we've got the micro from blue and the micro from yellow. And again, yellow, he just, he benefited from the early attack. When two players go man at arms and one person just com gets completely wrecked. This is normally what happens. Is that intentional so he can walk through here? Like, does it not let him build a gate on the hill? I'm so confused. Anyways, both players have full blacksmith upgrades now. And this is where you start to think about who's going to be in Castle Age faster. But this has been a messy one. The archers go over here to be sneaky. They get pushed away by skirms. Lots and lots of ranged units here. Villagers are going to go over to farms. All right, not bad. Let's actually look at the overall idle time. It's actually been pretty high for both players. And I think this stems back to how much yellow's been walling at home. And it's not like... It's not a bad thing to wall up and be secure, right? But in an ideal world, at least from my ELO's point of view, is if you're controlling the game with fights, you kind of know their army's not coming to your base, right? But, you know, for a while, maybe he didn't know that. Maybe he's worried that blue will be sneaky. Maybe he has PTSD because of some army getting into his base. But guys, can someone explain this to me? Why is that gate there? <laughs> this whole YouTube video, this whole video, when it goes up, is just going to be about the freaking gate. Need to understand. Anyways, I'm not sure if you picked up on it, but yellow, he's doing fine, right? Could continue with skirms, could continue with archers. And then, you know, maybe before the Imperial Age, because Indians don't get very good archers in late game, could make a switch of some kind. But because he's already doing well with ranged units and has already upgraded ranged units, Tokuraka's going to stone. Yes, that's right. Going to stone people. Anyways, go back to the overall KD here, and you can see it's evened out a little bit. Uh, both players floating some gold, so both players could probably benefit from a market. And you see that market now from blue. I don't think any villagers will die. This has been a scrappy one, but it should end up completing. In the end, Tokaraka, I think you've got to fight the army before you fight the vills, truthfully. He's kind of mixed between two. He's not sure what to go after, and there you go. He goes to the market. He buys some food. Blue is going to push this away because Tokaraka was kind of 50-50 on attacking army or attacking vills. And Blue is going to click up to Castle Age as well. But what Blue is, is making right now is skirmishers and archers. So let's talk about the elephant archer. I've had a few videos with the elephant archer, but none recently. And I don't remember the name of the other one. I'm going to see if maybe I can get it in the video description for you guys to put into your watch later. Uh, if you're watching this later. <laughs> Um, or want to watch content later if you're watching here in the stream. But, um, it's something Elfin Archers are OP. It sounds like a title I would make, but it was Hera against, I think, Barls. And Hera was Britain, so he's making a lot of archers. And then Barls made Elfin Archers. And this was the month that they had made the Elfin Archers cheaper. And the thing about an Elfin Archer, as we watch these armies micro, is that Elfin Archers are very tanky and they have a lot of Pierce armor. And my conclusion in that video was that, you know, elephant archers are actually very solid in late game scenarios against mass archers. You probably don't want to have only elephant archers because they're very slow, but they can be pretty good. All right. Now, there's a lot of stone right now for yellow. I think the other purpose of making a castle in this game is to drop a castle on the hill. But unfortunately... You know, when he was thinking of switching into something else in Castle Age, he did lose some control. I swear to God, there's a hole there. Like this... <laughs> what is that gate? That gate bothers me. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight because of this gate. What was that? And why is that even there? Okay, well, damage control time for yellow. And good damage control, actually. The most confusing gate I've ever seen in my entire life. 
And Yellow pulls some skirms over here. Also, there's a random scout. Did he make that? Yeah, okay. So he's made the scout. And that will clear that up. Now, I think... Oh, God. Why are you... No, don't... Man, these guys are such good players, but it's just a small thing sometimes. Tokaraka, the gate and the castle are killing me, bro. Anyways, he clears up the entire army from blue, and he doesn't want to leave his base because he's maybe worried that another army will come forward. Which, I guess it's easy for us to say that the army's not coming forward, but it, let's not stress too much on the position. I'd say maybe here would look better. But the castle is going to go up in front of the gold, and we even have a town center on the way here. But get ready for some Elephant Archer's people. Uh, blue has pretty much given up on the whole Archer Skirmisher thing. And last Blue checked, there was a really weird sideways gate. And there were two Archer Ranges. And he also saw a scout, so he might be thinking the enemy's going to make some camels. But apart from that, he doesn't really know. And ooh, a Lowy the Legend trick. Look at that. Baiting the opponent into the castle. The Blue splits away, runs away. We have the second Town Center as well. And even the third TC, so lots of economy coming. Again, Chinese are just a sick civilization. You can do everything. So, we have a civ that can do everything. And then we have the Indian player making elephant archers. Third TC. Now, what is really nice about Indians, and this is an underrated bonus, um, their villagers are very cheap. So... You see like 10 or 12 on food at this stage and you would normally think, oh, I don't know if I have enough farms to boom on three town centers and make elephant archers. I mean, elephant archers aren't cheap, don't get me wrong. Uh, they're, they're still chonky, but the villagers are very cheap with Indians. So here comes blue. And, and now it's a little difficult for blue to know where to hit. Like the one thing that is important when it comes to going for unique units is just that you're gonna have a castle which keeps you protected. And the enemy might just be out of options. Like, that's why I really wanted to see this castle up on the hill. But, okay, here we go. We have some melee units only for blue. So he's trying to break through. And we just got some house walls here. Good job. This random skirmisher is getting attacked by a lion. <laughs> it's going to go down to the scout. And this is blue's point of view. It's very even game here. Well played from both. And, okay, he did not see them yet. He does not know the enemy's going for elephant archers yet. This is a very important point. He might be a little confused. By the way, chat is telling me these guys are 1,700 instead of 1,600. Have I disrespected them? I don't know. I don't know. I should have done my homework on their elos. I apologize. Last I checked, which was like six months ago, I think that they were around 1,600. Chat will correct me, and we have fervor. Interesting. Okay, so blue definitely knows then. Like, look, he's got four monks, unless he's trying to get relics. I feel like, well, he's going for that relic. Yeah, maybe he's just getting fervor so his monks are faster to get the relics, but it does make sense to maybe think of making some monks when you think how to counter the elephant archers. Because how do you counter the elephant archers? They haven't been very aggressive yet. Every time I click one, it sounds like someone's sneezing, by the way. Listen. See? Doesn't it? Oh, that was a really, really manly sneeze. Okay. So this has turned very much into a boom game. And we have a fourth town center for blue. And we also have a fourth town center for yellow. And I guess the military they do have is strong. But we're not seeing too much other than that. As the Chinese player building up the stone count to maybe drop a castle. Kills the scout there to protect the monk. And so far, blue has been able to collect two relics. And is looking for more. There's a third one over here. The fourth one hasn't been spotted, but is actually over here. So I think with late game options and late game position, it is currently much better for the Chinese player. Relics give you more gold long term. They give you that trickle. And plus, if you think of the halberdiers, it's stronger for Chinese. Uh, you go down the line, basically what Indians are good at is they can make good ranged units. But what they're also able to make is apparently long swords. Now, this is an interesting timing on this because we, we just had a patch launch yesterday. Um, and I think it's going to be very exciting for Age of Empires 2 because a lot of infantry unique units are much cheaper now. And it's a lot more justifiable. And it's already been a bit easier to make the whole long sword switch. 
But I guess Tokaraka is blindly thinking the opponent's gonna go pike. And no, I'm not gonna make an elfin sound. But like, I can't say I really agree with this. <laughs> like, there are a lot of situations where blindly going into something could be seen as a mistake, especially when you have a scout here. Not, I guess he's forgotten about the scout because the scout is behind the little bush. Hey, whoa, there's an elephant. Guys, there's an elephant on top of the barracks. I've never noticed that. What the? This Civ has been out for her. Oh my God, there's another one. Wait a second. Where's the stable at? Where's the stable? Oh, there's elephants there too. What? Oh my God. Do, they, do all their buildings have elephants? No, there's a nice little pool though. That's cool. Um, No, I don't see an elephant there. Sorry, guys, this is really important. We got to find out before the army. There's elephants on top of the blacksmith? What? Okay, don't act like this is someone's like, it's an elephant sieve, T90, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, but like, Franks are a knight sieve, and you don't have knights on top of their, their barracks. Actually, hold on a second. Chinese. See, look. Point proven. There's nothing, uh... I don't know what you would have on top of a Chinese building, but... Anyways, this is a very weird play from Tokaraka, but it's like, if you're gonna do something, you should probably commit to it, right? And I guarantee you, Blue just kind of like crapped himself a little bit as he sees elephants coming out across the map. He hasn't had a clue that there were elephant archers. And we see monks, the scout leading the way. We've even got some skirms in there, and we've got long swords. Monk is gonna sni snipe the, uh, or the scout is gonna snipe the monk there. And Blue is about to hit the Imperial Age, and Tokaraka is going to drop a castle in Blue's face. Very good economy for both. The difference, though, is that one player is an imp and the other is not. And so this is what Blue can see, and the truth is, Blue cannot fight this. Longswords are attacking the stable. They're like, let's kill the heathens don't, that don't put elephants on top of their buildings. As Relic number 5 comes back for Blue. So, this is what you should do in Blue's position. You do not take any engagements until you benefit from the Imperial Age. I.e. Heavy Camel and Plate Barding Armor, and maybe Cavalier as well. He just cancelled it! He had Heavy Camel on the way and he just cancelled it. Misclick of the Sentry right there, okay. So mistakes were made. Then, you want to build up your army and you want to protect your traps, okay? So, we've got these Chonkers coming in. These things have 300 HP. And the camels... Okay, now he canceled Heavy Camel? What's happening? Did he lose the state? He lost the stable. That's what it was. Oh my god. Okay, so he lost the stable that had Heavy Camel coming in. And I'm not sure if he lost two stables where it was in. But we're gonna have to look back at that. This is just insane army count. Elephant archers, guys, are very tough to kill. And this all in is coming absolutely nowhere. Look at the elephants. You see how, how high HP they are still? It's crazy. We've got 5,000 HP on this group of elephants. There's only 19 of them. And now, Blue says third time's the charm, and Blue's gonna try and go for Heavy Camel. It's probably a little tilted. Thank God it's not in the forward stable this time. Um, it is being researched back here. But at least Plate Barding Armor is in, and we're also gonna see Blast Furnace come in. And Blue also has Relics. Tokaraka is just going to place a TC here and farm forward, ballsy. And Blue is trying to expand the eco because, yeah, this is rough. When you start to lose eco, you should expand. Kind of give up one portion of your base. Yeah, this is honestly really good play here uh, from Blue. Like, good play from Yellow as well, don't get me wrong. I like how the monks are in there to heal up the elephants as well. That's an underrated move. But really good play from Blue because I, I think a lot of players would have lost a lot more. The problem is, the clock is kind of ticking right now. And if you're ever going to get a chance of killing this army, the chance is going to be when Heavy Camel comes in. Like, I could see maybe mixing in... And this is what's tricky about this comp. Like, how do you kill this, right? I think the best thing to mix in is archers, but elephant archers are high pierce armor. So, and you also probably want to use your castles to produce Chukunu. Or, sorry, produce Trebs, not Chukunu. So here come the camels. I mean, it's camels against the castle unit in the longsword. So hopefully the camels will fare pretty well here. And the longswords disappear. But will the elephants disappear here? 
See, hitting and running, hitting and running. And look at that. They're destroying camels. Camels are not so good against ranged units. They're also not so good against forward castles. So yeah, like, what unit do you make against this many camel archers? Truthfully, I think the best thing you could do is a mix of stuff, but it's never going to be easy if it gets to this stage. Okay, we do have a treb here from Blue, finally. Blue still has three relics. And Tokaraka's got a lot of food right now, which could lead to more camel archers. We see four barracks, so it looks to me like it's going to be something like two-handed swordsman. And then maybe eventually champion combined with the elephant archers. There are aspects of this we should talk about that I'll bring up at some point. But one of those things is going to be blue raiding because yellow is on the front. But all right. Here we have the camels. All these camels have 3,200 HP. All these elephants have 8,000 HP. Guys, that's the HP of two freaking castles. Don't even build castles with this sieve. Just make elephant archers and just stand them on the hill and then it's completely fine. The only downside is you can't make trebs and petards and research conscription with elephants. Like, what? Now he's getting his upgrades so they're even stronger now and he's just gonna sit here. He's like, yeah, this is a perfect spot for me. You can't kill me. Now, the two-handed... Not the two-handed swordsmen. They're not two-handed yet. They're just one-handed. But the long swordsmen, truthfully, I don't even know if they were needed here. They were really nice to destroy the buildings. Uh, they're not the worst thing ever against camels, but I don't really know if it would have been any better than pikemen or some other unit, you know? 150 pop for blue, and blue just can't kill this army. It's insane. Now, the KD is going crazy because Tokarak has lost a bunch of population over here and may continue to do so. And that's actually a really good idea from Blue. But it's up to Yellow right now to just take down these castles and continue this push. And do not lose a trebuchet to a tower with five villagers inside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that stalls things out a little bit. I really hope that doesn't lose yellow the game. <laughs> a watchtower, people. A watchtower on 700 HP. Just took out a treb. Yeah, this castle from Tokaraka is a castle that tells me he's worried about raids. Not pretty. Maybe a castle here or a castle here would have been better, but... He doesn't know that Blue doesn't have any buildings over there, and Blue's still trying to expand, right? So the weakness of the elephant archers is that they're slow and they can only be in one spot. Like, one of the best things you can do against anything that's tanky and in one spot is avoid it. And so imagine if Blue had four stables and some rams, he would just ram right in, raid with light cap. You know, those are the types of things you want to think of. Blue is showing a little bit more patience right now, and Blue is thinking, I don't know, let's try going Halb. So this is the way I see it, though. Like, this is what's tricky about the Elephant Archer. It's, it has high pierce armor, so you never want to make archers against it. And then the other unit you would probably make would be Halbs, the pointy boys, because they do have bonus damage. But champion line wrecks Halb. So, like, it, this is a tough composition to deal with. Everyone sees Indians and thinks cav archers are camels. But don't forget about the elephants. I'm telling you, the winning move for blue, though is to try and raid, but he only has camels. Camels are not great offensively. Nokaraka mixing in some light cav is going to try and get some raids in of his own. And the key with any death ball, the key to make it work, is to have siege constantly. So if you have the siege and you don't lose your siege to a watchtower, then you can force fights and then they can't raid you because they have to deal with this. Nine pierce armor on these elephants. Ten attack. 300 HP. They aren't even elite, guys. Does anyone know how much HP an elite elephant archer has? I was actually surprised to see that even a regular elephant archer has 300. That's a lot of HP. I thought it was 200. That is way more than I expected. Another castle here for Tokaraka. This is honestly really bad to have to make three castles at home in a line. But it doesn't matter when he's continuing to pressure like this. And I think what Blue's going to try and do here is take a big fight. Here we go. Heavy Camel. Full upgrades. They're going to go in against these elephants. Still 8,000 HP here. This group of elephants has killed 70 units. 
according to Capture H. So that number will go down and up depending on the amount of kills and how many elephants actually die. Feels like the camels are doing an alright job. It's pushing the elephant archers back. That lack of a buffer is actually hurting here. The castle for blue, though, could go down if the treb isn't dealt with. We'll see if blue deals with it. And uh-oh. Uh-oh, elephant archers. He still didn't lose that many of them, but he is going to if he doesn't stick or if he uh, sticks around. So he has to back away. And now he has the champions. Okay, I'm being told the lead has 330. Really? That's not a big a big jump. And what does it up what does it do to their base attack? Is the base attack go up by one or two? Anyways, blue's still holding on here, man. Blue's still holding on. But you know what's so tricky is just relocating your eco constantly. Because you're, you're putting all your attention into defending and relocating economy, and then you never have the time and focus to be able to raid as well. Okay, here we'll see it. El elite Elephant Archer. So those were just Castle Age Elephant Archers. Champions also have as many upgrades as Indians can afford. Indians do not have the uh, final armor upgrade. And let's see. Let's look at the base attack here. Okay, so Elite is in. It goes to 7. I don't think they get any additional armor. Oh, so it's 350. Excuse me. Okay, so it's 350 HP and an extra attack. Honestly, I don't even know if that's... Unless they fire faster, too. I don't even know if that's that great. I think regular Elephant Archer is honestly bonkers. But if you have the resources, obviously go for it. And Tokaraka now tr finally realizing that he's forcing constant reactions from Blue. So he can raid the other side. And Blue sees this fight. And he sees the light cab, and blue just calls it. And the player who had all five relics, the player who has one of, if not the best, most flexible civilization for Arabia in Chinese, dies to elephant archers. And champions. What was that? <laughs> like, that was crazy. Now, I really wonder if blue, I actually should be able to go back to this. Oh no, it didn't save it. I really wonder if Blue would have had a better game here if Heavy Camel wasn't lost twice. Um, unfortunately, Capture Rage is supposed to give me a little bar that tells me... Yeah, like, look, he's researching Heavy Camel here. I think he ended up losing it twice in two stables, which is a big mistake. But I'm just not sure if having Heavy Camel would have really been the play there. Because it wasn't really the timing on the upgrades. It was just the type of units. That was That was incredible, right? Let's look at the... The statistics here, uh, the KD doesn't look that impressive. Not Maybe not as impressive as we would want it to look. But it really did feel like those elephants stuck around for a very long time. Uh, Tokaraka had more food, had more gold, had more stone. Of course, that forward castle was huge, right? He drops the forward castle and he's able to deny that gold. I think the best thing that you can do if you're blue... And it this is, this is the worst type of tip. People are always like, T90... How can I counter this or that? How can I stop this or that? And then I tell them something like this, and they don't like the answer. You ready? I think the way to stop this is never allow it to progress across the map. Right? It, elephant archers are slow. The only reason they could stick around here, the only reason they were here in the first place, is because blue didn't have map control, and blue didn't make army, and blue just allowed them to waltz out across the map. It's a very different situation. If blue makes a little more army in Castle Age. So that would maybe be my tip there. Okay. Um, maybe Then with Chinese, maybe eventually going for Chukonu would be really good. But blue was, was, was pushed back. And, and like blue, he couldn't make Chukonu. Or at least he couldn't commit to it because he had to make Trebs out of his castles to push this. So it was, it's tricky. It's complicated. But yeah, uh, my best advice there to blue is simply do not allow yellow to gain a foothold in the front. But in blue's defense... Yellow did what I thought was kind of bad, and he just didn't fight with his camel archers at all in Castle Age. So it was a massive surprise. It was an elephant surprise. Uh, yeah, I mean, he didn't show it <laughs> until he was walking out across the map. Anyways, impressive. I wanted to show that one to you. It's not every day you see long swords and elephant archers in Castle Age. And I think Blue played that really well, uh, with the exception of maybe just undermaking army in Castle Age. All five relics, good control with his eco, still ended up dying to that crazy composition. T90, serious question. When does it not depend? 
Um, it depends. 